Hello, I'm Laura Janusik on the ground at the 38th Annual Convention of the International Listening Association. We have had a great conference here in Omaha, Nebraska in 2017. So if you miss this, not good for you. Uh, but what we've decided to do was take five of the researchers and presenters and give you a little snippet of what theirs was about. Right now, I have next to me Roe Kirby Straker from the University of Maryland, correct? From Wake Forest oh, University. Oh, I'm sorry, Wake Forest <laughs> University. But I was at Maryland before. Okay, perfect. <laughs> and, and I did my PhD here. PhD in Maryland. And she did a program called Healing Ears, a service learning approach to listening instruction. Mm -hmm. So Roe, can you tell us just two to three minutes mm -hmm. kind of what your project was about? Yes, I'd love to. This project was about getting students at Wake Forest University to interact with people who are different from them in a neighboring community. Most of the students in my course were from affluent backgrounds and they had different socioeconomic backgrounds than the people in the neighboring community and of a different ethnicity, even in terms of generations, most of the people they spoke to were a little bit older. So we teamed up with the Pro Humanitarian Institute and that's uh, an institute at Wake Forest University that helps faculty connect with communities so their classes could have some community engagement what we did, we also worked with the Habitat for Humanity and got them to provide some of their residents to talk to the students. And one student took notes while the other student listened. And then they flipped those roles and they had um, another resident. But the beautiful thing about the project was that we spent almost all of the semester, maybe 12 weeks preparing for this. So as they learned about their, themselves as a listener, um, as they learned about that and they did the readings about listening in different contexts, especially in intercultural contexts, um, we also had guest speakers, they prepared, we did role play, all of that, that they were able now to have a setting in which they could then display those listening skills and see how it, how it worked. Mm -hmm. Something different from what they're accustomed to. <laughs> now, when they went out and interacted with these different members of the community, mm -hmm. were they doing any type of project together or was it strictly an interview? It, yeah, that's a good, a good question. It was strictly an interview, but they were paired mm -hmm. so that one was the new take and the other one was, um, the main listener. Uh, it wasn't really a project, but they did reflections at the end. Mm -hmm. So they talked about what benefits they found from that activity, uh, what they had in common with the residents, what was different, what was inspirational. Because the idea behind the course was mm -hmm. so students can build their listening skills, but also use it to heal some of the divides between people who are different from you. What were some of the big takeaways that you had uh, as the person who designed this project? What were your takeaways and what were the students' takeaways? Yeah, my takeaways first, from the reflections the students wrote, I found that they thought it was a very meaningful exercise they were motivated to learn about listening, knowing that they had to use it in, in this, what I call a relatively high stakes um, interaction. It was a role play, it was real. <laughs> yeah. And that motivated them. So I thought that one main takeaway was that if you could work with students, work with the community for an activity that's mutually beneficial, that that could really motivate students because a lot of times we say what you're going to learn will be helpful in your life it will be have help you listen better as a student but for them to have something that's more immediate mm -hmm. um, and relatively novel well, novel <laughs> novel is novel right 
um, that, that helps. So small activity but well planned can make a big difference because in their reflections they said things like, I really needed to hear what that person had to say to me. Um, I could see now why we did a particular reading or how these active listening skills do play out in situations like that. It was more concrete. Yes. Oh, so they made the ties back to the things yes. that they had done, yes. which is truly where learning takes place, yes. which was wonderful. Any last minute thoughts on your project? Um, yes, I, I want to say that um, it's really important when you're going into community listening projects that you work with people in the community. We worked with the Pro Humanitarian Institute at Wake Forest, but we also worked with Habitat for Humanity, and they were able to tell us what they needed rather than it coming from us. Mm -hmm. This is what we need from you. We need stories from our residents. Um, and I think that's really important. It, it flowed very, very well. But I know it's because of those connections from the inception to the in implementation. You had it planned. You had it well planned. Yes, with yes. their input. Yes, oh, yes. yes. <laughs> yes. yes. With, with their input from, from the community side. Work with the community needs first, and the students' needs will be met. So it and was very collaborative. Yes, it was very collaborative and mutually beneficial. Terrific. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much for sharing that program with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Signing off. Mm -hmm. You did great. It went over and over and no. over. And over. No, you no, did fine. No, you no, did no, fine. We're not going to happen. <laughs> this is going to happen. We're not going to do it. This is going to happen. It's, it's really good because it's like, it's like um, authentic. Yeah. yeah.